We're none the wiser about what exactly will happen, but we know that there's almost no chance of a no-deal Brexit. Is that fair, just because Parliament has really taken control? I think that's right, and I think there's not much appetite also in Europe for a no-deal crash out on the 13th right. of April. So I think really the debate in the European Council on Wednesday will be between a short versus a long extension, and I still think... You know, a, a, a long extension is still slightly is still slightly more likely. Okay, so what does a long extension mean? First, how many, I guess, you know, attachments or um, th things will the EU ask of the UK? And mm -hmm. does it just mean that we're back to square one? We start negotiating, but with that no deal taken off the table. Right. So, Francine, I think first we have to look at what's happening in London today, tomorrow. We have a two tack two-track process, May Corbyn talks, I think it's highly unlikely they will deliver, not simply because both leaders are tribal, but can they really converge on the substance? I think I'm, I'm quite sceptical. Then you've got to see whether the Commons can coalesce around a set of options that May and Corbyn agree to. I think I'm also fairly sceptical. So if neither of those tracks deliver, then I think you're looking at Theresa May turning up on Wednesday arguing that there is a process in place, that it requires more time, and Europe then essentially having to come to a decision as to whether it's in their interests to kick the can for a few more months or whether to do so for a longer period of time. And I think more likely they will do it for a longer period of time. And as you've said, you know, there will be a number of political conditions attached to that long extension. Have you seen any compromise yet, Midge? I mean, I think they are talking, Tom, about a, a customs union or a customs arrangement. This is something Theresa May has been, uh, you know, trying to force through now for, for a few days. Mm. But I think there are, still, there are still large substantive divergences. You know, it's unclear whether yeah. Labour will seek a referendum. You know, Labour also wants to enshrine much of this agreement into primary legislation to limit the ability of a new prime minister or parliament to then upend the agreement. And these, I think, are, you know, these, this is a fairly challenging bar for the prime minister to meet, which is why right. I'm sceptical an agreement can come together. What, what was interesting to me, and I put it out on Twitter, folks, and also I should note out on Twitter, Mitch Rahman, the last person in the universe to join Twitter is with us <laughs> uh, today. Midge Europe is what it is. Go look for that out on Twitter. But Midge, uh, Charles Moore over at The Telegraph, and obviously he's writing in a Brexit style and all that, had a beautiful summation of all this foolishness. And right in the middle of it, he had a bar chart of the regions of the United Kingdom. Am I right to say that still most of the United Kingdom wants to leave? Is that a correct statement? I mean, it, we're seeing different data, Tom. I think there is, there is an argument to be made that if there were another referendum, it would probably lean more to remain, but that the shift wouldn't be substantial. So you'd still have all of the divisions, even if the UK were to remain a member state, you know, with the big questions fundamentally unresolved. So there's a lot of competing data out there um, about, you know, which way a vote would go. And I think that's why leaders of both parties are highly sceptical about committing to a referendum, although Corbyn is coming under tremendous amounts of pressure to commit to one in the event he does a deal with Theresa May.